Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here with a video from My Favorite Things. In today's video, we're going to be doing some iron off embossing with the new Funky Flower stamp set that was released as part of the June release. And to start off, I'm just prepping my cardstock panel here. This is a piece of smooth white cardstock, and I've taken my magic powder bag there and I've just kind of rubbed it over the entire piece of cardstock because we're going to do some heat embossing on here, and I don't want the embossing powder to kind of stick where we don't want it. Um, we're going to be adding color over top of the embossing once it's complete, so you're definitely going to see specks of embossing if we have it kind of scattered around in areas that we don't want it. So just using that powder before you start just helps to take away the static and stop you from having that kind of stray embossing powder all over. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the stamps from the Funky Flower stamp set and I'm using some of the flowers as well as some of the leaf images and I'm stamping them onto this panel with Versamark ink and then I'm adding white embossing powder over top. Now you can stamp all at once but using the Versamark makes it kind of hard to see what you're doing. So if you add the embossing powder after each time you stamp you're able to see it a lot better because you can see that powder and know where you already have a flower stamped. It's not as easy, easy to see it on camera it, like you can't really see it here unless I tilt it in the light like I showed you a minute ago there but you can definitely see it in real life so it just kind of helps you continue to be able to work and not have to heat emboss after every single time that you stamp. So I started at the very bottom right corner and I'm just going to kind of work my way up towards the left top corner and I don't want to fully cover this panel. I'm not trying to create a full entire background. I just want to have a bunch of flowers and leaves in the bottom right corner that kind of make their way up the, the right side of the card and the bottom of the card. So I'm just kind of picking the different stamps that I want to use and figuring out what will fit in what spaces and I'm just kind of stamping them on there, positioning them where they're going to fit nicely and create a nice Nice, um, pattern design and then like I said I'm just adding embossing powder to each piece after I stamp it so that I can see exactly where I've already stamped. So I use all of my big images first so I use the larger flowers you can see there and then I use some of the larger leaves and then I'm going to go in and fill in the area with the smallest flower in the set and then I'm also going to use some of the single leaves and do some stamping with those leaves as well just to kind of fill in the white space and make sure I don't have any obvious holes or gaps in the stamped area. So once I have all of the kind of holes and everything's filled in and I'm happy with all of the stamping, I'm going to make sure that I have embossing powder on all the stamped pieces and then I'm going to heat set this. And that's going to make it so that the embossing powder is kind of raised off the surface and shiny. Um, if you've used embossing powder, you kind of know what it looks like when it melts. It gets like a shiny look to it and has a little bit of texture. And I'm going to, then I'm going to add color over top. And the great thing about embossing powder, once it's heat set, is that it resists any ink that you add over top. So you're going to still be able to see that embossing powder underneath, and you're going to see those images. So now this is heat set now, and you can kind of see, you can see the images a little bit better because they have that little bit of a shine to them. So now I'm going to get my little ink mat here, and I'm going to put the panel on top and use some ink blending tools to add some color to the panel. So I'm using Peacock Feathers Wilted Violet and picked raspberry distress inks and I'm going to start at the I kind of have a little applicator here for each color so that I can just continuously work and not have to remove the foam pieces from one single applicator and I'm going to start at the bottom corner and just kind of start adding ink now you want to make sure when you're adding the ink that you're you know you're kind of lighter handed you can always add more ink if you want it darker but it's definitely harder to take color away if you want it lighter. So I always recommend starting with a lighter hand as you add the ink and then just increasing your pressure if you want the color to increase. So I started with the purple first and then I followed up with the pink color. And then you've seen there I went back and used the purple again and went over it again. And this just helps to really seamlessly blend those colors so that they fade into each other and you don't have any harsh lines kind of showing where one color ends and the other one starts. So. You just kind of want to work your um, ink blending tools into the area and just kind of go back and forth between each color so that when you overlap the color, they're overlapping perfectly and really blending together. And distress inks are great for this because they blend really well together um, and they smooth out and just look really great. So you can see here I have this really beautiful color and I kind of let it fade off as I went up to the left corner of the panel, which is the look I wanted. I didn't want it fully covered in ink. I just wanted it to kind of fade off and just really focus where the flowers are. Now I also am going to just add a little bit of water on top. You can see here I just spritzed a bunch of water on 
and I have that panel laying on a paper towel and I just folded it over and that is soaking up the excess water. So you can see it's all over the paper towel now and leaves me with this really great textured look. Um, all these water splotches really add to the look of the panel and I just think it's such, it's one of my favorite things to do right now just to add texture and dimension to a background. So now here's the technique for today's card. So now that we're all done all the inking, I want the white on the flowers to not be shiny and raised. I don't want it to look like it was embossed. I actually want it to look like it's just like a piece of pattern paper and it's all one layer. So to do this, you just want to put your panel onto something that's going to protect the surface below. So I just have it on a little cloth here. And you're just going to put a piece of typing paper directly over top of your panel and iron over top. So you can see here, because I used Distress Ink and it was a little wet, I'm also lifting up the Distress Ink. Um, but I'm also lifting up the embossing powder. So it looks kind of cloudy right there just because I'm really making that embossing powder kind of spread out as I'm iron, ironing over top. But as you continue to iron it, just kind of move your text paper around so that you have a fresh piece every time. And just kind of run your iron over top until you see that you've pretty much lifted off all the embossing powder. And what you'll end up with is like a smooth finish and the white will no longer be raised or shiny. It will just literally look like the paper underneath, but you have this great inking detail around it. So it's an awesome technique to have the embossing to kind of create the pattern, but then take it away so that you don't have the embossed detail on the finished card. So now that I have the panel done, I went ahead and adhered it to a top folding wrote gray card base. And I'm keeping it very simple in design because I really want the focus to be on that colored background with those great flowers. So I just stamped the sentiment onto a little banner here. And then I adhered that directly onto the card base and finished it off with some clear sequins and silver stickles in the center. And then that's going to complete the card for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.